Hello and welcome everyone. Once again, my name is Gayan Pires. Uh, I work for the UN SDG Action Campaign in Bonn. A uh, few, um, few things before we start the webinar. If you want to ask questions, use the chat channel and also after some slides of my presentation, we will give you a chance to ask questions. And right now you should see um, a screen which has have your say, My World 2030 Asia Pacific on your screen. And uh, I will enable my camera towards the end so you can ask me questions and Nadine uh, is co-hosting this with me so you can ask her questions as well. Uh, use the chat channel and also if you have to ask a question, there is a raise your hand function uh, in, the, in Zoom software. So use that as well and we will unmute you so you can ask questions. Okay, uh, I'm going to reshare my screen because some people say uh, they have trouble sharing, uh, seeing my screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Okay, so I'm going to proceed with the, with the presentation. If you're having trouble, let me know. So my name is Gayan Peris. I'm the project lead for the My World Global Survey, and I'm also the digital strategist of the campaign. If you have any questions about My World, and if you need any advice about anything, anything digital, I'm available always. My Twitter is at Gayan Peris. You can find me on, on Twitter, and I think some of you already saw me on, on your Facebook group. Uh, so feel free to get in touch with me if you, are, if you need, uh, need any advice. In fact, uh, I would prefer if you um, keep Nadine in the in the loop, so we we have a, a method of getting in touch with uh, touch with us. So today uh, the presentation is not mainly presentation on on slides. I'm going to take you through some of the functions of my world. But first of all, let me introduce what my world is. My world is a global citizen survey. Why do we call it uh, a global citizen survey? Because it is designed to get perception information of people. As you know, in today's day and age, there's a lot of data sources available for decision makers or policy makers or world leaders. There is the statistical information and there is also the proxy information as we call it, like the satellite data, um, and other maybe electricity consumption data. But this is the only survey designed to get people's perception on whether those things are working or not. So to triangulate from statistical data to proxy data and uh, the perception data of people to, to build a clear picture. Now we connect with all of you basically, with civil society, with private sector to to collect this information, to get this perception information on people. I will, I will quickly touch upon why we think this perception information is needed. Imagine a government, your government implements a policy on education right now, today, and it will take 10 years from now to see the results. But perception of this, perception of whether the system is working, perception of whether that policy is working, working is something you can measure right now whether people are happy about it, whether people think it's getting better or worse. So which is why the perception information is something you can measure now, and that is very important as well. And the other thing about my own survey is you're part of a global program, actually. Whatever you collect is aggregated at the global level. I will go through the, the data analysis of, the, of my world as well. So the survey data is it's nationally adaptive, meaning when we collect the survey information, it, it can be um, measured nationally. At the same time, they, they get aggregated into the, into the global database and it will be shown to the world leaders at key moments. So uh, I will go through each of these sections in, in the presentation. But before I do that, I want to take you back to 2012. Now this is before the 17 goals were agreed. The UN, for, for the first time, opened it, its doors and said, what do you want, what the UN to focus on in the next 15 years? 
So we, we went out to the field, we collected 10 million responses from people. And if you go to My World 2015, I will share the URL in a minute, you can see some of those priorities that people have said that is important to them are very close to the 17 sustainable development goals we have right now. And out of these 10 million, 82% came through what we call the offline method. That is, at that time, obviously, the social media was not that popular. So, uh, and a lot of people didn't have connectivity to, to internet. So what we did was we worked with partners like you, who sometimes go door to door and collect this information on a piece of paper and upload it back into the system. So out of 10 million, around 8 million came through this method. And as you can see on, on the screen, some of these uh, voters, some of these responses came from people who are very young. And we had, uh, and uh, this is a quote from the Secretary General at that time. My world has shown how international organizations together with civil society groups can use data to feed people's perceptions into priorities, into the heart of the political process which is what you will be doing in the coming weeks and months. <clears throat> the data site of, uh, of My World 2015 is still available. In fact, uh, if anyone wants to have a look at it, uh, it is available on data.myworld2015.org. And you can see how, how we visualize some of the data. I'm not going to go details into this one because we will go into details of the new My World version. So, um, in 2015, in fact, we, um, we designed the new version of the My World, which is available on www.myworld2030.org. Now, we will go through once again all these URLs, but uh, what I want you to remember is this is easily customizable to match partner requirements, and it is available once again as online and offline survey, but there is a, um, there is a method, there is a very, um, there is a rule on how you want, how you have to collect this data, which Nadim will, will tell us a little later. And, the, and the, the, the survey is translated into 22 languages and counting. I will tell you how, how you can add a language as well. It's integrated into, key UN, uh, into the UN coordination system as, the, as a real-time perception monitoring tool. It has a partner portal, which I will come to in a minute as well. And it has toolkits to for running it at subnational, national, and global levels. And like I said, the results are integrated into PU and processors like VNRs, and uh, the data visualizations are shown at very high level events uh, at the, the high level political forum, at the UN General Assembly, the European Development Days. We will focus few events in Asia as well to show the results, show your results actually, show what you have brought in to the system. And you can see some of the customizations of the look and feel as well. And one of those customizations is the ASEAN version that we have. Um, again, I will come to that in, in, in the presentation. So the next part of the presentation is, is the practical part where I will go into some of the, um, uh, some of the functions of, of my world. Because I'm, I'm doing it on, on my screen, I will not have, a, have the ability to look at the chat window. So if anyone is reporting problems, uh, Nadine, please uh, let me know. So there are three URLs for you to remember. Even though there, there's four here, <laughs> uh, depending on where you are based in, there are three URLs. If you, are uh, from an ASEAN country, it is this URL, ASEAN.myworld2030.org is the one that you have to use. If you are from, if you're not from an ASEAN country, you have to use the www version, which is www.myworld2030.org. Now, what I have after that is the partner ID. Now, why have we created these partner IDs is we want to track the, the views, the visitors or the responses that you bring in. So whenever you collect uh, survey information or whenever you do a social media post, where my colleague Tina will explain in detail in, a, in, a, in an upcoming webinar, you have to use your unique URL. Now, how does this URL become unique is by attaching your partner ID 
to the URL. That is the main master URL, www.myworld2030.org slash partner. Now this part is always a constant, slash partner, slash your partner ID. Now I believe all of you have got your partner IDs. If you, if you don't, please contact Nadine's team and, and she will ensure that you have the partner IDs. And at this point, I will switch and I will go online and show you how to use this partner ID. So imagine I'm not from an ASEAN country. I'm using this partner ID. I'm sure uh, the, the, the advocate who, who, who uses this partner ID must be online. I'm just using your partner ID as, a, as an example. It's uh, myworld2030.org with or without www partner slash your partner ID. In this case, adv pgv number four. It's very important you use this partner ID because this is the only way we can track your responses. If you do not use it, if you by mistake share the, the common URL, there is no way for us to track those responses. So there's no going back if you, once you've done it. So be very careful to use your unique URL, which is with the partner ID. Now, if you're from an ASEAN country, as you can see, the look and feel is a bit different, but only thing that changes in the URL is this first part where it says ASEAN instead of www. And then simple partner ID, and I'm using uh, the partner ID of an ASEAN advocate here, uh, which is ADB IDN-5. Once again, this is the URL you should be sharing on social media. So if I copy that this and go to Twitter, this is the URL I should be sharing on Twitter and Facebook because this is your unique URL. And this is how we will track your responses. And I will show you how we track your responses as well. I said you have to remember three uh, URLs. So depending on where you are, it's ASEAN or www. Second thing is about.myworld2030.org. Now this is where I'm going to type it so you can see it as well. About.myworld2030.org. By the way, I'm, I'm working on uh, um, changing this site so you will see some changes in the, in the coming days. But uh, this site has all the information you need on my world. So uh, the first thing I want you to show is the resources part. In fact, this is where you will land most of the time. It's about.myworld2030.org. And you go to click on the partners tab and you click on resources. Now here, you have registered as a partner, which you don't have to do because you have already been given a partner ID. And do not go in and register a new one because use the one you have been given. The second one is collect votes on paper. This is for offline data collection. I will go through the offline data connection, collection, uh, how you can do the offline data collection. But before that, I want Nadine to jump in and explain uh, whether you should, uh, depending on, on your um, status of the application, whether you have, whether you can do offline or can, or just have to stick to online. Nadine? Sure, I'm here, Gayan. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Nadine from uh, UNDP Bangkok Regional Hub. Uh, yes, I wanted to really uh, highlight again, and this has been mentioned in the guidebook, this has been mentioned in the welcome webinar. So on one hand, you have the field advocates who are doing both online and offline activities, and they have been given a partner ID and it's already been registered into the table that are shared on the Facebook group. For online advocates, their work is strictly and only limited to online activities, so raising awareness online through digital marketing communication uh, initiatives. So really that is kind of like the main difference. For partner IDs for online advocates, uh, there is a post on the Facebook group and the partner ID. If you have trouble registering there, please uh, reply as a comment and we will try to help you. To be able to help you, you need to tell us what your problem is. So if you have, you have been able to register, tell us what your partner ID is and Suki and I will be able to go in the platform and check for you. Uh, and if there's really an issue, then we will 
go talk to the IT person to help you with registering your, your partner ID. There was one question that came a lot in emails and in messages is about what partner ID to choose for online advocates. My suggestion is for you to use your, your first name because you're gonna use this among your family, your friends, your colleagues, and personalizing the link will really help. An alternative is using the name or the acronym of your organization, but for that you need to get the approval of your affiliated organization to do that. So really you can choose something that is short, easy to remember, and where, where typos are not that easy to make. Uh, there were some previous advocates online who made a, uh, they had an issue with their, with their partner ID. It was something like NV Health, but they forgot the age at the end. So it, it was very problematic because some of the votes uh, they collected were not registered under their partner ID. So really try to choose something simple. Thank you, Nadine. So if you can still see my screen, I'm going to take you through my word and explain each of these fields so it becomes easier when I explain you the offline process and, and, uh, and the fields that it contains. So um, like I said, if you want to share the URL, all you have to do is get the partner ID correct, have the correct URL, it's partner slash your partner ID, and you can go into Twitter and start pasting that URL and, and sharing it with your friends and, and your network but that is how the URL will look like. Uh, the first question in the survey, in fact, is um, take the MyWorld survey. Are you aware of the sustainable development goals or global goals signed by the world leaders in 2020? If people say yes, they are presented with the goals. If they say no, there is a brief description of what the goals are. And if they say yes, they are taken to the goals and uh, they have to select which six of the following global goals are of immediate concern to you and your family. Now, why are we asking six? As you know, the, the, whole, the 17 goals needs to be taken as a whole, but we want people to think how these goals are interconnected. For example, imagine a family that has a little daughter they will obviously select, um, let's say education, uh, so their daughter can have better education, but then also they have to select, uh, they have to think about uh, uh, reducing inequalities and gender equality. So when that little girl has education, she will have enough opportunities. So um, we want people to think about the interconnectivity of the goals, which is why we are asking which six of the following global goals are of immediate concern to you and your family. And once again, I've been asked a lot of questions. Oh, I'm, I'm from this country, but I live in this country now. So should I, uh, should I select uh, where I live or where I'm born in? Actually, we ask people to, to collect information about where you live in. Uh, and and if, you are, if you go to a certain area and collect information from that area, we want the information to be about that area because that is becoming uh, that will become very useful in the data analysis. Now I, I will randomly select six. By the way, you might notice this is randomized. It's not from one to seventeen because we don't want people to just select from one to six and, and move on to the other question. So I will select six randomly. And the third question is: Would you say the situation on your chosen goal has got better? Stayed the same? or got worse during the past 12 months, over the past 12 months. Now this is important because then we can go to them again in the coming year and see whether the situation has changed. I will simply answer some of these questions. I will say zero hunger, quality education, uh, stayed the same, clean water got better, climate action somewhere in the middle, Life on land got worse, peace, justice, peace, uh, and strong institutions somewhere in the middle. The moment I uh, select those options, I'm, I'm presented with this screen where I have to enter some demographic information. Now, you have to remember the survey is completely anonymous. We are not collecting any personal information. But this information we collect here will help us in, in analysis, which I will show you uh, in the coming slides. We are asking for gender. I will quickly select something and uh, asking for the age as well. I'll select some random age. And my education level, uh, I would say primary, 
than the country I live in. Uh, I don't select a, by the way, I'm originated from Sri Lanka, so I will, take, I will select Sri Lanka. And I'm from a, a town called Mount Lavinia, so I'll select Mount Lavinia. And the disability status, if you say yes, it's asking for the type of disability as well. You can uh, select the, the type of disability. I will submit that. The moment you submit, remember this vote is registered with your partner ID in the database, meaning you can track the number of votes that you bring in with your partner ID. And even if you see on the, on the URL on top here, your partner ID is still registered, like it's still keeping your partner ID uh, as a tracking mechanism. Now you have collected an online vote. Remember the fields I went through with you. Uh, so when I go to offline, I want you to remember the, the fields that were available there. Once again, how, how did I get here? About.myworld2030.org. Remember the URL. If you remember myworld2030.org, you will remember it's just about in front and go to partners and resources. By the way, I will bring this section up to the home page uh, in the coming days. We are redesigning this entire website. Uh, and you click on collect votes on paper. So you, there are uh, different uh, versions of the paper ballot available in, uh, in different languages. I will select English for the moment so I can explain. Now this paper ballot, the offline version, is uh, printed uh, for two ballot papers to come on a single A4 sheet. And my colleague Tina will explain this more in the, in the, in the coming weeks. But uh, remember all the information we have. The first question, are you aware about it? It's right here. Then which six goals, it's right here as well. Once again, you can see it's not from one to seven, it's randomized. Uh, number three is, is the question where we ask whether the situation stayed the same, got worse or got better. And on the other side of this form, on the left-hand side, you can see where you have to enter the partner ID and the date. So your partner ID is the ID you've got, the same ID you used off, uh, online. These are the demographic fields uh, that's on the website. Here we have additionally email address and mobile number. It's strictly op optional. Uh, if they give the email address, fantastic. If, they, if they're happy to give the mobile number, it's fantastic but we do not want to collect, want to make it mandatory to collect personal information of, uh, of people. Uh, so this is the offline ballot paper. You can print this, take it to the field. And once you've collected the data, what you have to do is once again, I'm going back to the site I was mentioning, the about site, and there is a method to submit this offline votes. If I click here, it downloads an Excel file uh, I will see if, uh, if I can share this with you, um, share my screen with you. So you see this Excel file. I'm opening this Excel file right now. Uh, uh, someone online, uh, can you see, uh, hang on, I'll change my screen to the Excel file. Can someone online confirm whether they can see the Excel file that I've opened? Yes, we can see the Excel file. Thank you very much. Okay, fantastic. So um, the Excel file starts with those fields, actually. Uh, if you collect offline votes, the start and end date, once again, this is not mandatory, but the submission date is, is, is mandatory. Um, the method always is offline because you just collected the vote offline. Uh, and before I go into each of these fields, I want to show you there are some sheets down here which defines the data types. And here, there is an explanation of each of, these, uh, each of these fields and whether they are mandatory or not. So method of survey, whether it's web, offline or mobile, question one, whether it's a yes or no, question two, one, I will explain each of, each of these. Then here is the other important thing. Once you've downloaded this sheet, please ensure you change your country to, I don't know, because I'm from Sri Lanka, I'm going to change it to Sri Lanka right now. Um, 
Hope you can still see my screen. Uh, I'm going to change this to Sri Lanka. So only thing you have to do is change this to Sri Lanka and also copy the major cities uh, in, your, uh, in your country over here into, onto this next sheet. And in the partner ID, I'm going to create a test partner ID for me. I'm just say Gayan ABC-1. Yeah, no, Diane, is it possible to maybe uh, uh, zoom in a little bit because it's a bit small to see and some of the people in the comments box were saying, oh, we can see very well. Okay, let me see. Let me see if like, I can make this bigger. Thank you. Okay. Can you see it now? Much better. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, so in, on, in these sheets, in the drop downs, I changed my country. In the cities, I need to add all the cities here. Uh, and then on the partners, I'm changing my partner ID here. Now, why did I do this? Because when I go to votes, I'm only allowed to select from a drop down so you don't make mistakes. It's all, all uh, it's not free text as you cannot enter whatever you want here. You have to select from the drop down, yes or no. Uh, now, if the person has selected the question two, goal number one, which is no poverty, then this is a one, otherwise it's a zero. So this row always, this entire row should always, once again, I'm going to make this bigger. This entire row should always have six ones, basically. That means six goals were selected. Right? So there are 17 fields with Q2 and six of these should be one always. Question number three, whether it got worse or stayed the same. Once again, you have to select from, a, from the drop down. Basically, one is got worse, two is in between, three stayed the same, four is in between, stayed the same and got better, and five is got better. So if they have selected, for example, this have to always correlate with whatever you selected here. This cannot be zero, like goal one, no poverty, cannot be zero here, and you have an answer to question three for goal number one, because they have to select the goal first before going in and telling you whether it got worse or not. So uh, if it is one, then you have a value here. You can see certain fields are blank because you can only select six. So you can select uh, the, the goals they have chosen, and select the correct uh, response they have given. Uh, then once you've completed question three, which is got better, stayed the same, then we jump to the, um, the demographic questions. Once again, it's from a drop down, so you cannot uh, change this. Age, once again, it's a, it's a number, so you cannot uh, get this wrong as well. Education level, once again, from a drop down, the four education levels we have. The country, I remember I changed my country to Sri Lanka, so the drop down should only have Sri Lanka there. So it's picking from the field you just changed. And the city, I showed you here how you, you can enter all your cities in this sheet. If you just Google the cities of your country, you can simply copy paste it here and the city selection will be available here. So those countries, you, those cities you enter there will be available here to select. And here's the disability status. Once again, there is a, there is a correlation between this. It cannot be no and have a value on disability type. That doesn't make sense, right? So it has to be, if, this, if they've selected yes, then the disability type you have to select from here. Then the partner ID, remember I created a test partner ID for me. So that is available here right now. And this user ID is an extra layer of identification we've added. You can use this for any purpose. Like if um, uh, I'm not going to go details onto, onto this one because we, we, it's, it's um, a highly complex process we use for different sorts of identification. So you can simply leave this field blank if you want. So that is how you would fill this, um, this offline votes. Now I will stop there because this is extremely complex and take some questions uh, on how to use your partner ID, 
how to use the offline ballot card and how to upload the, so the votes back. Once again, when I say upload, we haven't enabled uploads yet. So you have to email it to a particular address, which I will show you on the screen. Where is mine? Dan, can I come in here and, and just specify that this is really the form that you just showed on Excel is really the second option. It is really highly encouraged that you use the online platform to collect votes. Uh, when you collect votes offline, it is an additional step. You have to download this Excel sheet and manually enter the information. You may uh, mistype or you may, it's quite, it's quite a lot of additional work. So wherever and whenever possible, really, really try to use the online uh, website. So you can use it on your computer, you can use it on your phone. Uh, the offline ballots are only also for the field advocates uh, because they are supposed to also canvas and go meet people in person. For online advocates, they are only and strictly required to do the online uh, voting. So just wanted to specify that to make sure everyone is on the same page. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Now, do you have any questions on how to use your partner ID? I will stop the sharing for a minute so I can see some of the questions coming. Yeah, some okay, people yeah. are asking for the presentation. In fact, because I'm doing this live, uh, I'm showing you live, uh, the recording of this video will be made available so you can go back and so no questions about the partner ID. Let's maybe give our advocates another couple of minutes to just like think about one. I can see we have 23 participants minus Christina, yourself and me. So 20 advocates are online with us right now. And I can tell from the names that not all of them have uh, got, gotten their partner ID yet. So if anyone has a question about partner ID, now is the time. You have uh, Gayan on the line who can give you a live answer. Okay. So Amy, Amy asked a question about, can you have two partner IDs? So I replied while you were maybe offline, Amy, is, uh, you know, why do you need two partner IDs? That's the first question. I would say, uh, you know, Christina was asking this question, maybe it's better to centralize all your, all your votes under one single partner ID. At the same time, in the past, previous advocates have had sometimes two partner IDs, one under their own personal name uh, or some kind of like shortened version of their name, their nickname, and one for their organization. If you do that, that means you are, it, it, uses, it, you know, it works for two different purposes. Your personal one, people will recognize your name. They know you personally. It can be your friends or your family or your immediate colleagues. If you use one with your organization acronym or your organization's name, it can be used by your organization. And you should ask your affiliated organization if you can do that. Uh, so the answer in the nutshell is yes. And if you do create two partner IDs, uh, please notify us either in the Facebook group or directly in the um, in the document, the Excel sheet I shared, I'm going to share it again, um, just in case in the chat. But I hope this answers your question, Amy, about two partner ideas. Thank you, Nadine. So if you have any more questions, uh, please raise your hand or send it to, you, send it to us on, uh, on the chat channel. Right. Now, there is a question on how do we track the reach? Exactly. So uh, uh, which is what I'm going to write uh, next which will also explain how important and why Nadine is, is asking you to, to, to use the online vers version as much as possible. By the way, we have an offline app as well, but it's very difficult to demonstrate it online, obviously. But um, if you want to use the offline app, if you are going to a remote area where there's no internet connection, and we are encouraging you to use the, the, the ballot, or the, like we are encouraging you, you to use the online version, there's an offline app as well, get in touch with us because once you, we have to register you in the backend every time you want to use, the, uh, use that app and we will provide you with, uh, with access to the app and also set you up with, uh, with the offline version. Get in touch with uh, me or Nadine on, on, even on Facebook group 
and we will set you up with the with the app and uh, it's once you install it it's straightforward just you go through the survey like you went through um, the survey online but i will give you uh, provide you that uh, those details uh, so next i'm going to show once again i'm going to share my screen properly let's see if i'm sharing the right screen uh, yes so um, the next URL you have to remember is data.myworld2030.org. Yes, we will share this presentation and you will have access to this URL, but if you're, but it's always this master URL, myworld2030.org and what's in front changes, right? So it's data.myworld2030.org, I will go there. Once again, I'm doing this live, remember? Uh, so you will be seeing what I'm seeing if you go to this URL. And here is why your partner ID is important. You can track the votes that you brought in through your partner ID. I will go to this advocate um, who has done, let's say, a DVIDN-2 who has brought in 1,000 votes, and I will say, filter by that partner ID only. And you can immediately see the results. Uh, well, most of the votes have come from Indonesia. So I'm assuming this partner is in Indonesia. Now can, you, uh, can you zoom in a, a bit, uh, Gayan? Because again, we can't see very well, unfortunately. Oh, right, okay. Thank you. I'm going to zoom this. Uh, How about now? It's a bit better, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you can okay. do even more, that's even better. It's quite small, actually. The yes, yeah. Now, okay. now it's good. I have a giant screen here, so the, my resolution is uh, is is very high, uh, which is why I think everything looks smaller here. Um, so I'm I, I have gone to this section, this filter and filtered only by, by default, it's, it's everyone, basically. Uh, but I'm going to filter by this advocate ID, advidn-2. You can follow me as well if you want, you can go to data.myworld2030.org and I'm going to filter by this advocate only. And I'm, this, this uh, visualization I see is filtered for that advocate ID only. So you can do this for you as well. Once you've collected the data, you can filter by your, your ID and you can see the results. And you can see most of the, the reach of this advocate is for young people between 16 to 30. We can get this information from the demographic information we've been collecting and majority are female. And you can see the cities as well, but the major, I can see that the advocate was in Indonesia And when you go to page two, once again, you have the ability to filter by uh, the partner ID. I will select a different partner now, ADVKHM-1. I don't know who that is, but I'm going to filter by just that person only. And you can see the votes are filtered by that person. Only. But for the moment, I'm going to take out that filter because I want to show some, show different visualizations. Now here, you can immediately see which goals are most more important to people. And we have 468,000 right now. And out of that, you can see a lot of people have opted for goal three, good health and well-being. And uh, um, you can filter by age group. I'm just going to select uh, 16 to 13, 30 only. So you can see those demographic data we've been collecting, it's very useful when it comes to uh, visualizing this. So among the age group of 16 to 30, however, uh, decent work and economic growth is, is more important to them. If I select uh, an age group, probably uh, 61 and above, I'm pretty sure it's going to be, um, let's see. Sometimes this surprises me. Yes, it, I was going to say it's going to be good health and well-being. So that's the most important one for people. 
So you can see, you can make different analysis. Once again, I'm going to go back to everything. And I'm going to filter by a country maybe. I said I'm from Sri Lanka, so I'm going to filter by Sri Lanka. There are 417 votes. So I can see in my country, let's see what's the most important thing for people. Okay, they have said quality education is the most important for them. And imagine this, what this data can do to decision makers, to, to governments. Like they know people are really concerned about uh, quality education. And I can even filter down to a city, Colombo, Sri Lanka, where I'm from. Just in Colombo, still it's, it's education, but you can see clean water and sanitation is, is the second most important thing in Colombo uh, as well. So the, not only um, the, the national governments, the local governments, the cities, the mayors, now this information is extremely useful as a conversation starter. This is something you can collect in your neighborhood, in your city, and start a conversation with your city. Look, my people are saying um, education is important. My people are saying water and sanitation is important. Let's start the discussion. So we, we, this is really a discussion starter as well. The third visualization we have obviously is on, uh, on the, uh, whether the situation got worse or got, or got better. By the way, this was recent, very recently introduced to the visualization. So you could, uh, uh, you could do the same demographic filtering, uh, uh, filtering here as well. You can see again in my country, let's see what people are saying. Once again, this is live. You can follow me, you can go to data. Even though URL has changed here, the master URL is data.myworld2030.org. So in Sri Lanka, a lot of people have said, no poverty, things are getting better, right? Uh, zero hunger, mm, it's 50-50. Uh, so you can see the type of analysis you can do here as well. And uh, um, some of these like life below water, obviously is getting worse. Um, so that is something the government should definitely focus on. So you see how, how you can measure people's perception on, on things that are um, important to them. Uh, now, the other thing I wanted to uh, uh, wanted to show is uh, I said during uh, during past twelve months, right? So we can, you can filter by a date range as well. So if you go to the same let's say same community next year, you can see how uh, the perception have changed uh, during the past year. Now, if you collect a vote now, like right now, while while I'm talking. It will take, this visualization gets updated uh, every, six, uh, uh, every six hours. So it might not appear instantly. You have to wait six hours for your results to be shown here. I have the refresh permissions for this visualization so I can obviously refresh it anytime I want, but uh, the automatic refresh happens every six, um, every six hours. It's important to remember that if you don't see your partner ID appearing, then just wait six hours. If it still doesn't appear, check whether the URL you have used is correct. Um, and in fact, I highly advise you to, the moment you get your partner ID, just do a single vote maybe, one or two votes, and ensure it appears uh, uh, under the partner ID, wait six hours. <laughs> and ensure it appears under the under the partner ID as well. So, uh, um, and if still if still it doesn't appear, then there is a problem. Reach out to us. We'll see uh, how we can help. Uh, in the guidebooks, Guyana I mentioned that they should wait twenty four hours just in case because sometimes there's the weekend or there's some you know bank holiday. Uh, we would encourage you to wait twenty four hours before going to the Facebook group and going to the post called partner ID and then uh, putting a message down there. So that really trying to go to the Facebook group and centralizing all the queries there would be the, the best way. I just wanted to re-emphasize and maybe explain in different words a bit what Guyane just explained about the data analytics tool. Just really emphasizing that this is a wonderful tool for you at the individual level to collect evidence, collect data. And if you are an organization to collect data for your organization about 
what are the priorities about the people around you? What do they care about sustainable development? And when you only have five votes, of course, it's not very representative. But when you're getting to 100, when you're getting to 1,000, then really it becomes very, very representative. And you can go to your local representative, to the municipal officer, and say, you can filter by your country and then by your city and say, it's not just me that thinks that SDG 4, 10, 16 is important. It's me and 418 people in my city. So you can use this tool as, as a tool for legitimacy. So it's just not you or your organization thinking that water or infrastructure or education is important. It's an uh, congregate, an, um, an addition of several people. And they don't necessarily have been collected votes by you, but it can be other organization, uh, other people, other citizens who have collected votes in your city. For capital cities like Manila or Jakarta, you have uh, tens of thousands of votes. So really, it's, it becomes quite a number, and it really, really can be useful. Uh, you can screenshot the results and include them into your communication material, for instance. You can use it for the online advocates. You can use it uh, in your visuals that you're going to create for your digital campaign to really show, well, in, uh, in India, for the age group 16 to 30, Goal one, no poverty is the most important. I, I'm just making this up. You can play with this tool. And as I mentioned in the chat function, you have the My World one, and then also one for ASEAN My World. These two, if this is a question that is often asked, are synced. And so this is the same information. And sometimes they're not, they are a few votes missing here and there, but they will adjust over time. So don't worry about it. Um, but you can use these tools really to to create these amazing tools, and I would highly encourage you to play with the platform. So what Gayan just showed you, um, you know, you can really filter in many different ways, and it's quite easy to use. Uh, and if you play with it, you will, you will get used to it quite quickly. Thank you, Nadi. So once again, the URL uh, where the data is available is data.myworld2030.org. So like I said, there's only three URLs that you have to Remember, based on your location, if you're from an ASEAN country, this is the URL, ASEAN.myworld2030. And um, if, you're from, uh, if you're not from an ASEAN country, then uh, use the www URL. Again, remember to use your partner URL. Now, one of the, the other questions I've been asked very often is, uh, how do I add my language? I said the, the survey is available in 22 different languages right now. I'll show you where the language switcher is. Um, I'll go back to my world and yeah, you can see the, the different languages it is available in right now. Now, if you want to add your local language here, it's very, very easy. Once again, what's the, remember the three URLs? It's one of those. So if I go back, it's about.myworld2030, Right? If you go to about.myworld2030 and the resources section, which I was showing earlier, there is a link called support translations. When you click there, everything happens in Excel. Once again, it will open an Excel file. I'm going to switch my sharing to see this Excel file. Okay. Colleagues online, let me know if you are, if you can't see my uh, Excel file. No, we can see it, but it's a bit small. So if you could just uh, zoom in, yes. that'd be great. Once again, I'm going to make this uh, zoom in. Uh, so this Excel file, once again, is in uh, in Sheets. And can you see the zoomed in version of it? Yes, yes, just fine. Okay, fantastic. Let me close the other one so I have, I'll ensure I'm showing the right one. Okay, so each language has a sheet at the bottom and you can see the languages there. So all you have to do is this is the English one. Let me know if you can see it. And it's very easy to, to go through this language file. You don't have to um, 
change the, the code. Uh, the language code is a universal language code, but you see this is the header text. So you can compare this with the online version where this appears. Have your say, the United Nations want to hear from you. Uh, so it's very easy to simply copy this sheet into, I would say, move or copy, and I want to copy this sheet, create a copy of the English sheet, and I'm going to uh, change it to Sinhala, which is my native language, and I, I start adding, I start changing this in, uh, in Sinhala. Basically, you have to add your languages in Sinhala, and it's it's quite self-explanatory. You can you can easily uh, understand what it is. It's what is for goal one, goal to goal seventeen. The descriptions, um, the option ratings, the yes no, then the countries. Um, countries you can keep the same. Uh, then uh, thank you for voting. The text that appears after voting. So all of this information is is available here. All you have to do is uh, enter them and send it to, um, oh, well, you can send it to me, my world, uh, or my world as stgactioncampaign.org, or you can also post them on the, uh, on the social, on the Facebook channel. In fact, I highly encourage you to post the sheet with your local language on the Facebook uh, group, because then if there is another person who speaks the same language, they can make improvements or make adjustments uh, as needed as well. Sometimes if you are not sure about the exact term, uh, the community will help you out with, uh, with some other wording. Uh, so once you do that, you send it to the group and I will take it from there and add it to the, add it to the system. So once again, I'll, I'll repeat my steps. Uh, you download the Excel file, you copy the English sheet uh, on, and, and simply start adding your uh, adding your language terms in, in front of the label. It's simple as that. And then you add it in the, in the group. Nadine, did you want yeah. to say something? Yeah, one tip for uh, languages that are not in the My World survey yet, uh, you can go and check on your government's website. So for Hindi, for instance, you have uh, uh, the Indian government as a specific ministry working on development issues, and they have an office working specifically on the SDGs, and they have uh, a lot of documents in their local languages. For India, the state level, you may have also vernacular and local languages available. So I would recommend to maybe Google in your native language. In your case, it was uh, in Odisha, you can maybe Google in your local language the word SDG uh, and, and sustainable development and see if maybe at the state level, there is an official state level institution who has already translated a lot of the words in the survey in your local language. So you don't have to start everything from scratch. Thank you, Nadine. So while you were speaking, I, I was going through some of the sheets and you can see how a uh, translated sheet looks like. So the English label remains the same, but the text on the second column uh, uh, changes to the local language. In this case, the, we, we've kept the, the countries in English, but everything else is changed to Malayalam. There's a question from Aditya about uh, if many, too many people put their input, provide their inputs on a specific language, what is the, what is the mechanism for checking? Good question. We, uh, in fact, in fact, in those cases, what we do is use uh, the UN volunteers, online volunteers, to verify the language. So we will, we will send that sheet to, uh, uh, to um, it's, it works on the, on the mechanism that uh, what most people would agree on, and we will use uh, some in-house capacity and, and uh, online volunteers to verify some of those languages. Uh, and in, in the case of uh, many languages in Asia Pacific, we also have colleagues in Bangkok who come from the entire region. So in the past, we have double checked, we have asked colleagues, uh, UN staff members to double check some of the volunteer translation to maybe fast track sometimes, because you need at least two people to uh, double check the translation and then ideally uh, a UN staff member as well, because once the, it, it takes quite a lot of time to put this in the system, right? You need like the interface in the back of the IT, Gaian has to work quite extensively. So you really want to make sure that the translation is vetted before you actually put it uh, up there. 
Uh, there's another question, Guyane, about offline votes from uh, Fali. It's about, is there an ideal number of offline votes per submission? For example, 100 encoded votes per submission. So I, I can start uh, by replying that, uh, as it's mentioned in the guidebooks, uh, the ideal way is that you first submit 20 votes uh, to Guyane, uh, either in the Facebook group or via email, so that one of us can check that you are indeed following the right format for collecting offline votes. And once you have done that first uh, step, you can send as many votes as you like. Uh, in the past, advocates have sent up to uh, 300 or 400 votes at once, uh, but there's, you know, it's better to have them in bulk. But the first step is 20 votes first to make sure that you're using the Excel table properly. Um, to avoid that, imagine you, you encode the entire sheet with 400 people and then you realize there's a big mistake. So really we want to avoid that. So please do first step 20 votes and then the rest. Thank you, Nadine. That's an excellent suggestion. Uh, um, so once you have verified that 20, you are using, that means you are using this, the correct format, right? So from that point onwards, for the system, it doesn't matter whether it's, a, whether it's 100 or, or 500 or even more, uh, uh, but what you need to ensure is you are using the correct format. So one way to ensure it is the moment you collect 20, you, you send it across to me or post it on in the group. So we upload it into the system to ensure the format is right uh, before you go uh, into the mass and co start collecting uh, information. So that's on... Uh, on translations and, and you, you send me this file or you put it on Facebook, as I said, I, I really prefer to put it on Facebook so you can get help from others on, on certain terms. Um, well, uh, that concludes the presentation actually. Uh, I've, I've used uh, most of the online uh, uh, browsers and, and uh, the, the, the real functionality to show you how, how things work. We will share the presentation. We will share the video of, uh, of this as well, so you can refer back to it. Once again, things to remember, your partner ID. You always have a unique URL with your partner ID, and that is what you should be sharing uh, in your social media posts. Um, so ensure you have that. Like Nadine said, do a post and uh, do a, uh, at least one or two survey responses using your partner ID. So you can see it in the data visualization to ensure you are, to, you are doing this correct. Remember the 24 hour uh, wait that you have to do. Uh, and then once you've verified everything is working fine, use that URL for all your advocacy material online or, or offline. Uh, that concludes the micro presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, now is the time to raise your hand or ask it uh, in the chat channel. Um, I'll leave this thing open and, and uh, probably I'll stop sharing so I can see the chat channel as well. So while we're waiting for questions, Guyana would like to thank you very, very much for taking the time to explain all of these platforms. And uh, just reassure our advocates that this may look complicated and uh, but you will get the hang of it quite quickly. Once you have played with each platform a little bit, uh, it was designed to be very user-friendly. And it's been used in lots of schools, for instance. So you have school children who are like 10 or 12 years old who are able to use this platform. So you, as advocates, you'll be able to, to figure it out as well. So let's see if there are any questions. Uh, take your time. Um, yeah, I enabled my video so I can say hi to you. <laughs> So really the, the tip, I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, Fadi is just saying she, she prepared a lot of votes that she collected. Uh, it's going to be an, a bit of extra work for you, Fadi, to uh, collect them in the Excel sheet and, you know, not, not get uh, confused with the numbers. Uh, you will be able to do it and, and they will be uh, transferred into um, you know, the, the platform. So nothing will be, will be lost. It's the same. If you forget to use your partner ID, the, the votes are still going to be registered on the platform. So it's not completely lost. It's just as long as you direct them to the My World survey, uh, you know, some, some people have um, shared the wrong partner link. So they forgot, for instance, between myworld2030.org and their partner ID, there's a slash partner slash and then uh, their partner ID and they forgot 
uh, that little uh, word in between. Uh, well, don't worry about that because your vote is still not lost. So you haven't, you know, all the, all the votes you're collecting, maybe for you it will seem very cumbersome, just 10 or 20 years or 30. Some advocates have reached over 2,000. And of course, that's a, a lot for one advocate. But in it's, what really matters is uh, seeing the big picture here because you are contributing to such a large movement. So Guyane explained this when he, he was explaining the platform. There are people worldwide. There are people in Mexico, in Mali, everywhere collecting information about the SDGs. So you are doing your piece on behalf of Asia Pacific. And uh, I, I know, I'm not sure the person from the, the person from the Pacific are here, but for the Pacific and certain uh, countries in the Asia, we have so little information. For India or China, we've searched our popula populations. We only have tens of thousands of votes, which is really nothing compared to the size of their population. So really looking at the big picture, you contribute to a massive uh, data evidence collection that is worldwide. So that is really being part of that global movement and knowing that you know, it's not only going to be used um, you know, and in a publication and then shelved. Uh, our role as UNDP, as UNV, as SDG Action Campaign is taking the data that you collect and we present it uh, at you know, big meetings around the world. Um, for instance, there's the upcoming UN General Assembly taking place in New York and uh, our colleague from uh, UN SDG Action Campaign, Laura, will be there with one of our advocates actually uh, from Nepal, Kanshan, she'll be there too. And they will be presenting some of the results of this program. Uh, at the Asia Pacific Forum on Sustainable Development, it's been now a few years that me and my team with Hani and with Suki, we've been organizing events to present the My World uh, 2030 survey results and kind of some of the insights on, on the efforts that you're making, on the votes that you're collecting. So it's not just um, you know, one survey platform, a website where nothing is happening. We're using this data on a daily basis. We incorporate it into reports and we share it with uh, decision makers. Thank you, Nadine. That's uh, uh, until you read the question, uh, just to compliment that, uh, I and Tina will be uh, in New York as well. So if, you're, if uh, one of you are coming there, a few of you are coming there, please uh, come and meet us. And also, like Nadine said, this is an opportunity for me. Just a few weeks ago, I was having uh, uh, an advocate uh, from Asia Pacific talking with me in Japan about how his experience uh, in, in collecting, in, in the My World uh, 2030 program. So this is uh, this is an this is an opportunity for you to show uh, your advocacy power and uh, take this and go to go to your networks and and show us what you can do. Nadine, over to you. Question from Nir about: uh, Is it necessary to create an organizational ID or personal ID is enough for data collection? So Nir, this is really entirely up to you. Uh, some advocates have only had uh, they are assigned partner ID or the one they created. Others have also created an organizational one. I would recommend that maybe, I remember, uh, I think that you're from the Blind Youth Association in Nepal, that you check with your management and see if they would be interested in becoming an official My World partner, joining thousands of organizations in the world uh, collecting evidence on the SDGs. So it's really a personal preference. Uh, I, in my opinion, you, you need uh, a partner ID to be able to track your progress. Um, for online advocates, I would like to uh, specify that there is also a joint partner ID, uh, which is ADV Online. I uh, put it down here in the chat again. So in case you don't wish to create your own partner ID, it's possible for you to use this partner ID to collect votes. And uh, so it's not completely anonymous. We won't know who collected it. So you don't have to create for online advocates necessarily an, an ID. Uh, Aditya also asking a question about, uh, could Nadine share one or two examples where you were surprised with some of the initial results of findings? Uh, well, actually there's- I can uh, share one actually, Nadine. Uh, let me share my screen again, so I can really show you how, how this happened. Uh, let me see if I can find my browser window. Uh, can you see my browser window? Oh, I don't think so, right? Yes. Well, we can see, we can see your desktop, actually. Okay. How about now? Yes. That's, okay. oh, well, that's a fine ballot. Oh, that's fine. So I'm going to go to the data site. 
and take an example from Mexico. Um, so Mexico City, uh, in fact, uh, did the survey among two, 200,000 young people. And uh, this organization called Inhue uh, did, did it, and I'm going to filter by them. So because this was done, now this is votes only for, uh, collected from the Mexico City, among 200,000 vote. As expected, everyone expected them to say, go late, decent work, economic growth, uh, is the is the priority as expected that is the priority but this one good health and well-being for people became the second and this really surprised everyone because uh, well this is young people we are talking about they shouldn't be worried about uh, health and well-being basically and uh, then they, they this opened a conversation with uh, with the city of mexico and they did a uh, did a follow-up and, and went deeper into, into the problem to see what the problem is, what they are talking about, and then figured this is actually mental health these young people are talking about. But they didn't want to talk about this as a health problem. They, it's, it's about depression and, and uh, the, the issues that they were having mentally. So the, the city of Mexico, as a result of this, created a program. They obviously didn't call it uh, mental health institutions, but came up with a very creative uh, Spanish name, which I cannot pronounce, <laughs> but uh, the, to open these centers around the city for these young people to go and talk to uh, someone about the, about the issues that they were facing. So this is a great example of how sometimes the results surprise you and open a conversation about a deeper issue that, that lies there. Great, Aditya says that your example was perfect to explain, explain how it was surprised. There are really a lot of examples, especially when you filter by age group. Uh, when you are dealing with, when you're collecting votes from young people, a lot of the time you're thinking, okay, it's gonna be jobs, uh, SDG eight, and education, SDG four. Uh, but sometimes you realize, even when you're filtering by older people. So when I went on mission on the peace boat, you had a lot of uh, Japanese and Chinese people, the average age was about 58 years old. And in fact, uh, even some of them had like uh, grandchildren or great grandchildren. And in fact, even for all people, education and jobs often came out as like one of the top priorities. So really there's uh, in each city, in each country, you will see a lot of results. And of course they will change a bit over time. So sometimes um, SDG five on gender equality is doing quite well for a while. And then it kind of like drops down again. So the, the votes, it's really the, the number of votes that matter, but of course, you know, depending also on each age group, on each SDG, on each city, there will be changes and they will, it will also evolve over time. This is something very important to remember is when you're looking at the data analytics tool, uh, you should go back later because it will evolve. So when, you, when you're taking a, 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 an, when you're analyzing the, the data tool, it's really just a screenshot about people's perception of certain SDGs at a certain point of time. If you go back six months later, you will realize that maybe the, the results have changed. So that's, that's also quite interesting, I think. Great, any more questions? Otherwise, I think, uh, Gayan, uh, we may wrap up quite soon. So if anyone has any more uh, burning question, now is the time. Let's see. It's like uh, no questions. Once again, uh, if you have questions, use the Facebook group. Uh, I'm monitoring it, Nadine is monitoring it. Uh, so we will try to answer your questions as much as possible. Thank you so, so much, Gayan, for again, taking the time to answer all these questions, presenting all the platforms. It was really very useful to understand how to add a language, how to use the data analytics tool, uh, I hope all the advocates have taken advantage of, of, uh, of this webinar to really better understand the platforms. And the final advice to you is really play with the platforms. And the more you play with it, the better you will be at understanding how they work. And quite frankly, they're, they're very easy to use. So thank you, uh, Gayan. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you on the Facebook group. And we'll be with uh, Christina later this week to start uh, talking about social media tips and digital marketing. So we'll be, we have another webinar this week and we'll see you, we'll see you then.
Have a wonderful afternoon, Gayan. Wonderful evening, everyone uh, in Asia Pacific. And again, thank you for joining. Thanks a lot, Nadine. Thanks a lot, everyone. Talk Bye, to you soon. Gayan. Thank Bye. you.